Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, today we've got an interesting one um, and it's one that uh, when I was actually in the shop buying this in Beer Moth in Manchester of course when uh, I was out with Paul, Craig, Rob, Harry and Stuart and James uh, we went to Beer Moth and I saw this in like this sort of um, like the bargain sort of box near the front and uh, I was like, I've not had a beer from these guys for quite a while, so I decided to pick it up. And uh, basically, we have got a bottle of the Brewage Nussknacker, which is a barley wine brewed in collaboration with uh, Schwarzbräu. I'm sure I've had one of their beers before, or there was a, there was a German brewery which had a swan as its logo. But then that could have just been the, the German word for swan, which is, I think that begins with an S-C-H, I can't remember. But um, yeah, I actually remember seeing this loads when I was back in Germany, in uh, Beretta, in Regensburg, but never really pulling the trigger on it, um, I don't know why. But uh, yeah, Brew Age, I think I've had like one beer from them, uh, which was a, it was just some sort of porter, but I can't really remember... Uh, what specific sub style it was um, but I know that they're getting um, a lot of hype recently and um, fellow beer bloggers uh, Martin uh, Feucht from Pro Beer TV or TV uh, recently did a collaboration with uh, Simon Martin aka Real Old Craft Beer with these guys and I know that they produced a really uh, stellar New England style IPA as well so you know, they're getting, getting, doing the rounds, we should say. But uh, yeah, so an Austrian brewery. And um, yeah, out of, uh, where are these guys out of? Haberland Grasse and the Privatbrauerei Gerald Schwarz is from Erlenstadt in Krumbach, which I'm not too sure where that is. I think that might be in Austria as well. But um, yeah, so this is a 2015 vintage, because uh, it was obviously filled on the 22nd of the 12th, 2015, with a best before date of 16th of the 9th, 2018, and it's 10%. And uh, yeah, so there's the Nuss Knack Knacker. So uh, you have to apologise about my terrible German pronunciation. I've lost a hell of a lot of my uh, German since I've come back to the UK. But the Hopfensorten are Cascade, Chinook and Columbus. The Maltz Sorten are Pils de Maltz, Munchia Maltz, I could never I could never pronounce that. Maltz and Caramel Maltz. And then the Bittereinheiten is 65 IBUs and the Faber is Bernstein. So um, yeah we've got a 10% aged barley wine from Austria which is also a collaboration brew which is always interesting. And I do like the simplicity of Brewage's artwork, and I love the crown even more. So, let's see what we get with this one. And like I said, pick this up from Beer Moth in Manchester. A shop I think every beer lover at least knows if they've not visited it. And a shop that I very much look forward to visiting once again. So, let's pour this into the glass and see what we get. Okie dokie. Nice amounts of carbonation. Being 10% ABV, that head did not last long at all. But oh my word, look at all those particulates. It's like a beery snow globe in there. So yeah, obviously murky uh, due to those uh, little bits and bobs. Um, sort of ruby red when you hold it up to the light, but it's got that almost like dirty pond water look to it, or like when you've... Uh, they're, they're doing work on the, the water pipes and you you put the turn the tap on and it's all like brown uh, which is a terrible way to describe beer but it still looks really nice actually uh, but yeah sort of got like a sort of chestnut look to it as well uh, dense murky but um, yeah I was not expecting that much in terms of um, sedimentation so let's see what we get on the nose if I don't spill it all over my hand Oh, that smells lovely. Obviously, big, malty aromas. 
I'm getting almost like um, malt loaf in there as well, or um, hot cross buns. Big, sweet, sugary caramel tones. Big nuttiness in there as well. You do get the uh, inkling that it is a 10% ABV beer, but it's not boozy, if that makes sense. It's like... I know I use this a lot, but it reminds me of like um, a cooking liqueur or like a sherry as you're burning off that alcohol and you're getting those lovely fruity yet sweet and chocolatey sort of caramel notes. Yeah, loads of sort of currants in there, like steeped uh, Christmas pudding aromas. A little bit of a woodiness, which also has subtle licorice notes. But it just smells so luxurious. Um, it's actually reminding me of uh, the uh, J.W. Lee's Harvest Ale that I had uh, a few weeks ago. I'm instantly reminded of that. But also, there's like like slightly burnt marmalade in there as well. I think it's one of those beers that you could just keep smelling and smelling. And the complexity of that beer would shine because you get so many different flavour notes and profiles. But it smells absolutely wonderful, so let's give it a taste. Prost. Oof, those hops really kick it up on the back end. That's a really quite bitter um, barley wine. It's definitely, I mean, with hops like Cascade, Chinook and Columbus, it's definitely going towards that sort of American style barley wine. Obviously those hops have faded on the, on the flavour. Although they have left some sort of like resiny oiliness there, which I think is also coming from that alcohol as well. But this beer is definitely, definitely me mellowed down. It clearly has mellowed. Uh, there's no sharpness there. There's really no harshness either. I'd say it's more hoppy on the intake, and then those hops come back with a vengeance on the back end as they dry the palate out. Because it is a very dry beer on the back end. Um, it has got those subtle sweet notes. But it's almost like you've had like an Imperial Cascadian Dark Ale, or Black IPA, and let it mellow down. Now, obviously, I've never tried this before, so I don't know what it's like, you know, getting it like a week or so after it's been released. I mean, my stomach is warming up um, sensationally now as I'm drinking it. But it's weird. It's like you want to take your time with it and savour it, but it's surprisingly drinkable. It's got a bold body to it, but it's not too heavy. Big, almost like licorice flavour coming through on the back end, mixed in with those hops. Definitely has that sort of like slightly burnt caramel flavour to it. A little bit cakey. Um, it's definitely, it is sort of tasting like a cross between a Christmas pudding and a hot cross bun. I mean, I'm not the biggest barley wine fan. When I like, when I have barley wines, I do sort of tend to lean towards the more British style, where it's a little bit more uh, decadent and sweet. This you can definitely get that American influence coming through, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think this is a really good example of a barley wine, and one that you could happily keep hold of this, like for a couple of years after the. Um, best before date. See, now I'm going to have to try one of these fresh to do a revisit sometime. But yeah, I like that. That's like a beer that you'd end the night on. Um, do you know what I mean? Or if you're Paul from Pierre Bruni's, which it is a bit thin for his taste, this is like, 
This is the starter of a beer session. And see, this is a beer that I'd like to share with someone, especially someone like Paul. Um, very sticky on the lips. It's got that cross between like, um, you know, when you've you've got um, like a glazed pastry and you get that stickiness from it. It's like a mix between that, but like an oily stickiness from the hops. Yeah, those hops are rarely present, but not in the way you would think. And I think that's nice. They've sort of like mellowed down nicely where they don't just become like boiled sprouts, which I have found sometimes with um, hops uh, when they just become like a plant. Do you know what I mean? Like vegetative, vegetative, vegetative. Is that the right word? I don't know. You know, sort of like when you over boil like vegetables, that sort of thing. But now they, 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 mellowed down nicely the alcohol has mellowed down nicely as well and i tell you what i think if you were to age some of this in a whiskey barrel because you do get that slight vanilla peatiness as if it is a whiskey barrel it's like almost reminded me of uh, the backwards bastard from founders as well which I've got another aged bottle in the uh, beer wardrobe slash cellar, which was gifted to me by another beer tube legend, Rob from Hop Scene. So looking forward to tucking into that one because it's one of my favourite beers of all time. But uh, yeah, this is a really good beer. Um, if you're trying to get into barley wines, I think this could be a good way to go, especially if you've been uh, traversing through primarily like IPAs and that sort of thing. Because I think the hoppiness makes this a little bit more accessible than some of the more British examples of the style. But I don't mean that in a bad way. You can enjoy this beer uh, whether you're new to this sort of thing or if you've been drinking for years. I think there's definitely, definitely enjoyment in this one. And this is a perfect beer to share on like a cold winter's day or to coming towards Christmas. Do you know what I mean? It's got one of those sort of feel feels. It hits me in the feels that way. And um, yeah, I like that. I like that enough to give it an 8 out of 10. And I like it enough to try a fresh bottle. Or as fresh as I possibly can. I mean, it did carry the price tag of £5.30. Which I'm not too upset about. Uh, because Beer Moff did most of the work for me in ageing the beer. And plus it's a barley wine from Austria. So I think that's a pretty damn good price by all accounts. And uh, yeah, definitely going to have to check out Schwarzbräu as well. I might have drank some of their beers, I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, so that's the Nussknacker barley wine. Um, a barley wine brewed by Brewage and Schwarzbräu. So check out both breweries down below. Um, if any of my friends and fellow beer tubers have reviewed this one, then of course I'll put their reviews down below. And hopefully in the future I can review more of their beers from both breweries. Um, I don't know if I've reviewed enough barley wines on YouTube to have a playlist. But if I have, that will be down below as well. Uh, check out my Beer Moff playlist. And of course, go over to Beer Moff. And of course, check out Paul and Rob from Hop Scene. Uh, Paul P.A. Bruno's Rob from Hop Scene. Links in the description. So, um, yeah... Awful review. I do apologise to the guys over at Brew Age and, of course, Schwarzbräu. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And if any of you guys have drank this or any of the other beers available from both breweries, then give me your thoughts and opinions down below. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I shall hopefully see you later. Auf Wiedersehen.